Hello, in this video, I would like to show the test run of this 3D printed mini RC chassis I built recently. The suspension and drivetrain is inspired by Tetra truck, which have independent swing half axle for articulation. Take a look at the dimension of this build. Notice the 15cm ruler. This is a pretty small vehicle. The reason for choosing to build in smaller scale is so I can easily run it even indoors like what I am doing now. The amount of time and cost required in preparation, printing, and maintenance is also lower than bigger builds. Parts are easy to come by in this size. All the gears are from Tamiya Mini 4-Wheel Drive Series. There isn't a lot of weight to move, so a 130 size motor is sufficient for me. It is backed by a gearbox that provides about 20.7 to 1 reduction ratio. The power is then transferred to the crown gears which drive the wheel, with final reduction ratio of 51.9 to 1. Each half axle has a crown gear that took place of the bevel gear real life Tetra truck uses. As the axle swing for articulation, the pivot point is centered with the main drive shaft and the gears simply swing accordingly without losing their contact. This eliminates the need for any form of universal joint which is often required for suspension movement of the driven wheels, and so there is no concern of exceeding the optimal angle for the joints in long travel suspension of application, and no joint failure to worry about. Though this mini model can use some sulfur spring as it is having trouble fully compressing the shocks with only 220 grams of sprung weight and therefore unable to fully utilize the suspension travel range. I am planning on building an expedition vehicle body for this chassis and maybe the extra weight will solve this problem. Even with this issue, I'm pretty happy with the overall performance for now. It doesn't seem to struggle too much crawling around the pile of stuff I have laying around. Mounting the motor on top of the front axle really helped climbing steep inclines, and I am able to dress the motor up to pay tribute to the air-cooled T930 V12 diesel engine found in Tetra T813, since it is located in a place where the engine could be mounted in a real-life counterpart. In addition, the decorated pieces also serve to protect the wires going to the motor, but I am not so sure of the supercharger and ram air intake parts. It isn't very realistic for a supposedly diesel expedition vehicle, and maybe I'll swap it out somewhere in the future. I run a 2 cell LiPo battery pack with 350mA of capacity mounted near the rear axle and placed relatively low for central gravity. This also helps balance out the motor up front so it wouldn't tumble too easy going down hills. The steering is powered by an aerotronic micro servo and I try to set the linkage for as little bump steer as possible. The dog bone style drive shaft that powered the front wheel is fabricated using 2mm hex shaft from Tamiya Mini 4 wheel drive with some 4mm pressed e bracelet, some stainless steel wire and super glue. The receiving end is made out of 5mm copper pipe. This method is easier for me to achieve compared to blazing metal and has held up pretty well so far and seems to be plenty sufficient if I don't drive with the intention of destroying it. Now I want to talk about some of the tools I used on this project. A huge thank you to FreeCAD, Blender, and Audacity. These three softwares make expressing creativity accessible for a lot of people. FreeCAD is what I use for parametric modeling. This is my first project using this software. I use Blender for video editing in this case and I believe it will also be very useful when I work on the design of the hard body I mentioned before. I do realize it is polygon based modeling and it is not the best choice for product design, but for my purpose, which is printing a small scale model, the capability of exporting STL file means it is good enough for me.
The online community of this software is great, and there are plenty of YouTube channels that are really helpful. Last but not least, I use Audacity to make my voice a little bit more bearable. The 3D printer I used is Creator Pro from Freshforge. The white parts are printed in ABS for better strength and more tolerance to heat, even though I doubt the motor is hot enough to soften PLA. The gray parts are printed in PLA to save some time from heating the printing platform. Though this isn't a very simple project, I believe it is still very much doable. It might take a few days for me to sort out my files, but I would like to share some SDL files of this chassis on Thingiverse somewhere in the near future. I also plan on releasing a build video soon. That's all for now, thank you for watching.